Well, another day in northern Michigan, uh, just leaving Traverse City and heading north towards Charlevoix and Petoskey. We've had good luck in this area before, and we're in a new car, a new set of wheels, 64 and a half Mustang Coupe. You know, I'll, I'm not going to leave my card. I'm going to write it on a piece of notepad and just leave it in the door. Okay. Ford trucks, Chevy trucks, first gen Bronco, Jeep Wagoneer, Suzuki, so I'm going to have souped up Suzuki. We'll come back here next time, when maybe on a weekend when the guy's here, and talk about his collection of vehicles. <laughs> Our intention was to come back here as a small airport near, it's south of Charlevoix, Michigan, to see if any hangars were open, to see if there's any cars stored in the hangars, which you know, small cars can fit under under the wings of airplanes, but uh, the gate's locked. I mean, it's another thing from 9-11 that the security is much tighter than it used to be. Pretty cool truck. You know, it's and it looks like organic to this area. It looks like, you know, a local truck that's just been well cared for. Can't help but notice your truck. Can't help but notice your car. Yeah, it used to be an old forestry truck in uh, Washington State. Oh, yep. You got a YouTube channel. Yeah, I've seen it. I yeah, wish I could help you, to be honest. But... Figured he might know of cars in the area, but he said, I don't live around here either. Anyway, he liked this car. I like this car. Here it is, F100. There's a good shot of it. A couple of houses jumped out at me. One actually was a building with an old Dodge, whatever the equivalent of a, an Econoline van was, maybe from the 60s or 1970 or something. It's a Friday afternoon, maybe somebody's home from work, so we're just gonna stop by and pay a visit. If you're a car person, when was the last time you saw one of these? As a kid, I remember there was a drag race truck that was like this, but it was a pickup version of it, and uh, it was a little red wagon, and it was a wheelie vehicle. Same vehicle, although this is a van. So I'd say Ford probably was the market leader in small vans in the 60s and early 70s. Chevrolet would be second, Dodge probably third. I'm guessing that. So this is a sportsman. So it must have been like a deluxe edition because it's got windows, it's got passenger seats. The, the uh, odometer reads 22,533 miles. So what year is this? 1968 Dodge. So I bet it's a six owner. And I was wrong. It's a V8. 210 horsepower, 318 cubic inch V8. So this was the cat's meow. I mean, this was a passenger van with a V8. This is, this is a nice vehicle. Uh, with a six owner engine, it was 170 cubic inch. 101 horsepower, one barrel carburetor. It was available in a panel van, which would have been no windows, with a 224 cubic inch, 140 horsepower, one barrel. And then it was available in this sportsman van with a 318 V8, two barrel carburetor, 210 horsepower. This would be a cool vehicle to own. If you could live with the rust or repair it as you enjoy it, although you, you'd have to become a welder or have a friend or a brother-in-law that was one. Oil change stickers in here, 1974. Oh, see, see? So we have 22,000 miles in the odometer. Here, the oil change was changed at 79,000. So, okay, that answers our question. It's been around the clock one, so it's 122,000 miles. I don't think on this series we've ever found one of these. So we will ask if it's uh, available for sale. I'm Tom Cotter, and your name is? Jack Kanukin. Nice to meet you, Jack. So your wife called that a hippie van. Well, I guess it was at the time. Was your father a hippie? No. <laughs> he bought it used. Did he really? 68. So you, did he buy it like in the 80s or something like that? Yeah, can't remember. I would more like 60s. So it wasn't that old. Wow. So how long have you had this van? I don't know. I'd have to look in the glove compartment and see where the death certificate of my dad died. What are you going to do with it? You want to keep it, sell it, restore it? <laughs> I'd like to restore it. But they're talking $10,000 
and there's yep. nothing really wrong with it because it runs good. Right. Except, like me, the body shot. <laughs> well, thanks so much for, you know, we have barged in on your life. You got a card or something? He has cards. left and right, left and right, go down the road, and you see something, if it looks looks good, you need to go back and check it out. We're riding down this road, I bet we were doing 55 miles an hour in our beautiful Mustang Coupe. Trees, a 50 foot brake, and trees. And there's a driveway here. And this is how fast you gotta look. You gotta be, when you see a break in the trees, look quickly. And I look quickly, and see that Falcon back there. Uh, so turned around, came back, and the owner said, yeah, that was my high school car. You wanna look at it? And I got a couple other cars, so we're gonna go take a quick tour of his property here. So let's start out with the car we saw originally. He drove it in high school, but he's used it since as a parts car. You know, this is, a, I, I think, to me, uh, an attractive car, and a car worthy of restoration. Although we know this one is not worthy of restoration because he's already used it to cut out structural members to fix up another Falcon that he's got. He, he cut out floors out of here, inner fender panels, things like that. So it's a good parts car, I would say, but it's probably, it might be too far gone to ever do anything with unless you wanted to pro street it or something like that. He used it for parts for a car he's got over here that's a hard top, which means it's got no, no post right here. So we're gonna go take a look at that now, and it's a freaky car, and I'll show you why. Now this is a sweetheart, and he always wanted a two-door hard top, and it looks so right. It's, it's got, you know, factory stripe in here, Wimbledon white, like the Mustang we're driving. Nice red accent, nice chrome, great paint. And a Chevy 350 engine, fuel injected. He said he built the subframe in here, he's got Mustang 2 suspension, six speed manual gearbox. <laughs> he said the car, it, the, the engine's too much for the car. The car is so light. Um, he said I need bigger tires on the back. Uh, he just can't control it very well, but what a surprise. I mean, you don't see this happen very often, the Chevy engine in a late model Ford. It's not like it's a 34 Ford or a 40 Ford, it's a 64 Ford. He built a heck of a car. We should look at some of the other cars here. This one's got my attention. So this Falcon wagon had a six cylinder in it from the factory. Whoever put this motor in, a previous owner, it's a 302, it had air conditioning in it. Now it only retains the air conditioning uh, unit under the dash, but there's no compressor or any of the controls remaining. But he says, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I think I, I, think I just might sell it. You know, me being the wagon guy, Kind of get excited about that. He said it's been patched. So it had some rust spots. It has been patched, so it doesn't have a perfect body. I wonder how many miles are on this thing. Maybe it says 67,000. You know, the seat's still in decent shape. Roof rack. It's got the right wheels. I mean, period wheels. And it looks like it was last on the road in 87. Can you imagine that? So in the garage over here, I only know this because he, he let me go in here with him before. Another car he had in high school, a 55 Chevy, and it's got basically the same engine as his Falcon does, a throttle body fuel injected 350. So I don't know where his loyalty is. Is he a Ford guy? Is he a Chevy guy? Certainly he's a Chevy engine guy. I'd say he's a Chevy guy because over here, so this is the, the Cyclone, GMC built these things, and it was a pickup truck. And this was a hot rod pickup. I, I don't know if it had a Grand National motor in it, but it had a V6 that was turbocharged. I mean, I couldn't believe that, that GM was producing cars that could put that kind of horsepower out. You know, they needed something to bring people in the showroom. Well, this certainly did it. The paint on this thing is immaculate, beautiful. Still smells new in here, wow. 7,800 miles. Yeah, he's got it up in the air, so there's no weight on the tires or the suspension. These are probably the original tires that came on it when it was new, Firestone. Hmm. Some more facts on this uh, Cyclone pickup truck. They, it, it became the fastest truck in the world at its introduction. 
it would go zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds, and it would cut a quarter mile time in 13 seconds. So this truck having, you know, so few miles, it actually turns out to be just over 7,000 miles, would probably rate it as an excellent condition. So Concours, if it were Concours, it would be the best in the world. If it were Concours condition, it would be 46,300 as the average value. In excellent condition, $35,100. And then you go down average condition, which would be kind of a real, real nice driver, 21,007. And then in fair condition, $14,700. So I don't know what he paid for this, but I'd say it's, it's worth probably in the area of uh, $35,000. Pretty cool truck to have gone canyon carving with Porsches and even you know crotch rocket motorcycles in, its, in the heyday. So uh, you don't see many of these, and when you do, it's a special day. He's got other cars on the property, including one in the woods that he says should be my style. So let's go check it out. It's a 57 Chevy, um, four-door Bel Air. The moss growing on it, it's got Oldsmobile cutlass wheels. Sadly, this is my style. I don't know much about it here, let's see. I think what I do know is that it was made in Michigan. It had a, a three-piece bumper in the front. If it was made in California, it had a one-piece bumper. Now, I think that's the case. I'm not really a 57 Chevy guy, but I think I heard that a long time ago. So it's got a three on the tree. I'm almost afraid to open the door because it looks like things might be living in here. Not much going on here. There's holes right there. I saw a hole in the bumper here, uh, all around here. So this is a parts car, or uh, I would make it yard art. I mean, I'd put it out in the yard here and trim around it, uh, although people would be stopping all day long. So it's got 1971 plates on it. That's been sitting for a long time. And there's one more car. He said, you can open the garage door and take a look at it. So we're gonna open the garage door and see what he's got. So, interesting, another Grand National. We found one in Traverse City already. So there's, there's two that we know at least that are kind of sitting in garages, either appreciating or depreciating, I'm not sure. But this looks as clean as the other one did. I take it it doesn't have a lot of miles in it. Keys are in the ignition. It's ready to go out and burn rubber. These cars are amazing. It's a V6. It actually, it might be the same engine or a similar engine to what we saw in the, in the Cyclone pickup truck. Uh, the first one I drove of these, it made no noise. And all of a sudden the car's going sideways down the road and I thought I had hit an oil patch or something. And the owner next to me says, ha, 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 you're spinning the wheels. Holy mackerel. Well, this turned out to be a pretty good stop. We've been here for a while. Actually, the owner had dinner and he's already done eating dinner. We're still here. And it's just that, that falcon sticking out that far. There's a 50 foot gap in the trees that we saw this. Like, I'm telling you, these car, cars are hidden all over the place. And some are outside and they're worthless. And some are inside and they're pretty darn good. Happy hunting. I think he said this is a 73. And short, short bed, it's got a, a 400 in it. Short bed. And it's original. Man, look at that paint. Could it be? It's got 470 miles. And also a short wheelbase. These things are fabulous. I mean, when do you see trucks like this, this clean, man?